Hi, my name is Amber Terhune. I'm the health educator for the Johnson County Health Department. This presentation is about meningitis. Meningitis is an infection where the membranes covering the brain and spinal cord become inflamed. It may be caused by bacteria, viruses, fungi, or other means. Bacterial meningitis is very serious and it can be life-threatening. It causes about 4,100 cases and 500 deaths in the United States each year. About 1 in 10 people are a carrier, which means they harbor the bacteria in the back of the nose and throat, but have no symptoms or illness. It is caused by different bacteria, which enter the bloodstream, often through the sinuses, ears, throat, skull fractures, or rarely from some surgeries. Here is a list of the most common bacterial causes in the United States. Streptococcus pneumoniae is the most common cause. It often leads to pneumonia, ear infections, and sinus infections. A pneumococcal vaccine is available. There's also group B streptococcus. Positive moms can pass it on to their babies during labor and birth, but antibiotics can be given to women during labor to prevent the infection in newborns. Neisseria meningitidis is also known as meningococcal disease. It often causes upper respiratory infections but can also cause meningococcal meningitis or blood infections known as bacteremia or septicemia. It is highly contagious. Serogroups groups A, B, C, W, and Y cause the most diseases worldwide. Meningococcal vaccines are available to cover these groups. Haemophilus influenza type B, or Hib, was a leading cause in children before the Hib vaccine became available. There's also Listeria monocytogenes. Those most at risk include pregnant women, newborns, older adults, and those who are immunocompromised. There is no vaccine for this. Incubation period for bacterial meningitis is three to seven days. For treatment, IV antibiotics are given as soon as possible. Broad spectrum antibiotics may be started until the specific type is identified. Corticosteroids may also be given to reduce swelling. A person infected may also need breathing support, medications for low blood pressure, and wound care for damaged skin. Bacterial meningitis is spread through direct contact with nose and throat secretions from someone with meningitis. It can be spread through coughing, sneezing, kissing, sharing drinks, eating utensils, toothbrushes, cigarettes, and lipstick, or living in the same household of someone who is infected. It can also be passed through food with Listeria monocytogenes, which is found in unpasteurized cheeses, hot dogs, and in lunch meats. Viral meningitis is the most common type. It is usually less severe than bacterial. It is caused by enteroviruses, which are more common in the late summer and early fall, herpes viruses, such as herpes simplex and varicella zoster, the measles virus, mumps virus, influenza virus, and West Nile virus. The spread depends on the cause and can include respiratory secretions, bodily fluids, insect bites, or through the fecal oral route. Viral meningitis often clears on its own in seven to 10 days. Treatment includes bed rest, fluids, and over-the-counter medications to treat the symptoms. Someone who is infected with viral meningitis may also be prescribed antivirals if they have herpes or influenza, an anticonvulsant if they have seizures, and corticosteroids for swelling. Fungal meningitis is rare and it is more common in those who are immunocompromised. It is caused by inhaling environmental fungal spores in the soil. Common fungi include cryptococcus, histoplasma, blastomyces, and coccidioides. It may also be caused by contaminated injection medications as what happened in a multi-state outbreak in 2012. It is not spread person to person. The fungus enters the bloodstream and travels to the brain or spinal cord, or there may be an infection near the brain or spinal cord. It is treated with antifungal medication, often through long-term IV medications administered in the hospital. Here are some other causes of meningitis. Parasitic meningitis is caused by parasites. It is not spread person to person. Someone becomes infected by ingesting something with an infectious parasite. It depends on the type of the parasite, but it may be through raw or undercooked snails or slugs, parasite eggs, something contaminated with raccoon feces, 
raw or undercooked freshwater fish or eels, frogs, poultry, or snakes. Treatment commonly focuses on treating the symptoms. Amoebic meningitis is caused by Neglaria phalari, which is microscopic amoeba found in warm water and soil. It is commonly found in the southern states in the United States. It may be found in warm fresh water, such as lakes and rivers, hot springs, naturally hot drinking water sources, poorly maintained swimming pools, water heaters, soil, but it is not found in salt water, such as the ocean. The amoeba enters the body through the nose from swimming or diving in warm fresh water, irrigating the nose with contaminated tap water. It is not spread by drinking contaminated water or spread person to person. It is rare and most often fatal. Between 2006 to 2015, there were 37 infections in the United States with only two known survivors. It destroys brain tissue and death ranges from one to 12 days, but it is usually within five days. Other non-infectious types of meningitis may be caused by some cancers, lupus, some medications, or head injuries. Symptoms may develop over hours or days. It can include sudden onset fever, severe headache, stiff neck, drowsiness or confusion, seizures, loss of appetite, skin rash with bacterial meningitis, which appears as bruising or bleeding under the skin, nausea and vomiting, photophobia, which is sensitivity to light. In babies, it may include high fever, irritability, constant crying, poor appetite, difficulty waking, stiffness in the body and neck, and a bulging fontanelle, which is a soft spot on the head. It is important that you seek immediate medical care if you suspect that you or a family member has meningitis. Many methods will be used to diagnose a specific type of meningitis. A physical examination with history will be performed. Blood cultures may be done to see what microorganism grows. Cerebral spinal fluid may be collected to check for glucose, cell count, protein, color, and to test for the specific type of organism. A nasopharyngeal swab may be collected, and they may also do a stool specimen. Imaging tests such as a CT scan, MRI or x-ray may be done to look for swelling. Some populations are considered at higher risk for contracting meningitis. This can include children less than 5, teens and young adults from 16 to 25, adults over 55, those living in or visiting facilities where there is close contact with many others, such as college dorms, military barracks, jails, and child care centers, those living in the same household with someone who has meningitis, pregnant women, those who are immunocompromised, such as having HIV, taking immunosuppressant medications, or not having a spleen, or having a spleen that is not functioning as normal, those who are not up to date on vaccination, those traveling to endemic areas, such as the meningitis belt in sub-Saharan Africa, and those traveling to Mecca during the annual Hajj and Umrah pilgrimage, and those living in areas where the fungus is endemic in soils or contaminated by bird and bat droppings. There are many possible serious complications with meningitis. They can include hearing loss, memory problems, learning disabilities, seizures, chronic meningitis with fungal infection, permanent brain damage, loss of limbs, problems during pregnancy such as stillbirth, miscarriage, premature delivery, or life-threatening infection in newborns, or death. Meningococcal disease can be fatal within hours or days. 10 to 15 percent of those with meningococcal disease will die even with treatment. Your best protection against meningitis is to prevent it, and there are many ways to do this. Prophylactic antibiotic treatment should be given to close contacts with someone with meningococcal disease. Do not share drinks, eating utensils, lip balms, etc. with others. To prevent the spread, be sure to cover your nose and mouth when coughing or sneezing. Have a healthy diet, get plenty of exercise, and rest. Follow good hand washing procedures. Avoid touching your face with your hands. Eat safely while you are pregnant with pasteurized products and fully cooked meat. Avoid close contact with people who are sick and be sure to stay home if you are sick. Avoid insect bites. Limit water entering your nose. 
and stay up to date on vaccinations. To protect against bacterial meningitis, be sure to get the Haemophilus influenza type B or Hib vaccine, pneumococcal conjugate or PCV13 vaccine, pneumococcal polysaccharide PPSV23 vaccine, and meningococcal ACWY and B vaccines. To protect against viral meningitis, be sure to get your measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine, or MMR, since there are no individual vaccines in the United States, your annual influenza vaccine, and your varicella vaccine. Be sure to talk to your doctor to see what vaccines are recommended for you and when to get them. It is important to know that just because you acquire one of these bacteria, virus, or fungi does not mean that you will develop meningitis. This concludes the meningitis presentation. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit any of these websites, talk to your doctor, or contact your local health department. Thank you.